A state of emergency is in effect for parts of Florida affected by yet another round of toxic algae blooms. The guacamole-like sludge has once again turned up in waterways on both coasts. And here's how it got there. Heavy rain, like what we've seen recently, dumps into Lake Okeechobee, which is filled with fertilizers and nutrients from farmland. To not overtax the old dike around the lake, water is sent west down the Caloosahatchee toward the Gulf and east into the St. Lucie River to Stewart and the Atlantic Ocean. When the sun hits it, the algae blooms. Normally, the salt water kills it, but with so much released at one time, the salt water is diluted. Freshwater algae cannot be sustained by the salt water coming in. So if we stop the discharges for a little while, allow those tides to come in and out of the inlet, that brings that salt water in and, and kills back the algae. And that is what the Army Corps of Engineers agreed to do, to stop the discharges by closing the floodgates at Port Mayaca at Lake Okeechobee. But that was only temporary. Earlier this week, the White House backed Florida's effort to secure federal funding for a reservoir intended to move water away from Lake Okeechobee and reduce those discharges altogether. The funding request for the Everglades Agricultural Area Reservoir now heads to the U.S. Senate. And Shannon Estenos is the COO of the Everglades Foundation. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us thank this you morning. Having me so explain to our viewers this Everglades Agricultural Area Reservoir. It should help alleviate some of what we've been seeing, but how exactly will that work? So the reservoir is located south of Lake Okeechobee, and your animation showed that right now the primary way of getting water out of the lake is either to the east, to the St. Lucie Estuary, or to the west of the Caloosahatchee. We don't have the engineered capacity right now to get a lot of water to the south, even though that's the way water flowed in the natural Everglades. The water didn't flow east and west. It flowed south into the Everglades and down to Florida Bay. So the reservoir, which will be located south of Lake Okeechobee, is an engineering solution to that problem. So it solves really a number of problems at the same time. It helps reduce those flows out to those two estuaries, but it also helps get that lake water moving south again uh, the way it did in under natural conditions. Okay, now it goes to the Senate, yes. whether or not that funding, that all-important funding will come through for Florida, but it's going to take several years to complete no matter what, so what can be done in the meantime? Well, there's n not a lot that can be done to stop an algae bloom once it starts. Um, certainly, reducing the amount of nutrient pollution in our waterways is is a, a big part of the solution, and um, that's something that Florida needs to work on. The way algae works is it thrives when there is excess nutrient and pollution in, in fresh water, and we sort of have an all-you-can-eat buffet of nutrients um, in water, and when summer comes and the conditions are right, the nutrients are going to take advantage of that excess food, if you will, and uh, and bloom. Okay, so let's blooming. talk about that algae yeah. and that bloom, and it's, it's really gross to look at, for lack of a better term. Residents or visitors think it smells bad, it looks bad, but let's talk about the impact. We're talking wildlife, business impacts as well. What are you hearing? Well, um, the impacts are dire. Uh, right now, we're seeing, just to give you an example, we're seeing an algal bloom in the Caloosahatchee River, for example. Let's just take the west side of things. Recent water quality samples that were taken from the Caloosahatchee, uh, the EPA sets a recreational exposure limit um, to this kind of algae of 10. And the samples that have been taken from the Caloosahatchee recently, 1,900. Wow. wow. 1900. <laughs> I thought you were going to stop so, at 19, not no. 1,900. 1,900. And so what that means is that this is in a part of the river where people are boating, people are normally would be fishing, um, boat ramps are there, and so, uh, you know, it really makes the waterway not usable uh, to folks who want to recreate, you know, on the Caloosahatchee, for example. I've seen the hashtag, and it's got to say it's pretty clever, now or never glades. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about what can be done. Mm -hmm. If nothing is done, let's say, into the future, what are we looking at as far as the river of grass here? Well, um, we're looking at potentially the demise of the river of, of grass and we've known for a very long time that the economic well-being of this region relies on the sustainability of the Everglades it's where we get our drinking water it's the source of fresh water for our fisheries our coastal fisheries so many sectors of our economy rely on a healthy Everglades so there really there isn't an alternative if we want a thriving South Florida we have to have a thriving Everglades and there's no plan B Everglades restoration is the cure to the sick Everglades. And, and let me say this, that algae blooms are a symptom of a sick ecosystem. 
Uh, just like if you have a young child and, and they have a fever, a high fever, you know that something is causing that fever. Yes, the fever is the immediate crisis, but the cure is to is to really cure what's causing the fever, and that's what Everglades Restoration is all about. This reservoir is a, one of the most critical components of Everglades Restoration. It's really important that we move forward with the restoration pro project if we want the entire region to be sustainable into the future. So obviously, we as residents of the state of Florida are, are concerned about what's going on here. What can people do to make sure that the Senate takes some sort of action? Well, the, the good news is, is that the Trump administration cleared the report this week, as you mentioned, and so it is now on Capitol Hill. It's, it's waiting to be passed in the Water Resources Development Act, and so um, folks who care about this issue um, can take direct action by just using their phone. They can text the word WATER, W-A-T-E-R, to 52886. And that will send a message directly to their legislator and to the Senate to, the Senate to uh, pass the Water Resources Development Act, which now has our reservoir in it. And very quickly before you go, because I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, wait, they close the floodgates and then they reopen them and people might be confused. Why do they need to do this? Explain to our viewers why it has to be done, really. It does. Um, the way that system was engineered decades ago, the east and west escape valves for the lake, they're the only way to get water out of the lake. And um, the Herbert Hoover Dyke, which is built around Lake Okeechobee, um, can only safely hold water at a certain depth. And in order to protect lives and property south downstream from the lake, the Corps of Engineers has to manage those water levels in a safe way. And we're looking at another three months of the wet season. So we, in, in the event we get a hurricane, that lake needs to be able to take the water that, that the, the upstream sends to it and the, that and that mother nature sends to it so the army corps of engineers really doesn't have an option mm -hmm. um, until we build new infrastructure like this reservoir we're going to continue the corps is going to continue to send that water east and west and you mentioned the strength of the dike mm -hmm. around the gokichobi and that is a, a major concern is That's your right. organization involved in sort of uh, improving that front as well i'm sure it's a multi-pronged approach it's right. not just the reservoir that needs to be handled that's right so the good news is is that the federal government has fully funded um uh, rehabbing, rehabilitating the Herbert Hoover Dyke, which is aging, and um, as I mentioned, which the Corps of Engineers has a lot of concern about. And that's really important um, to make sure that that dike is safe for the people who live downstream. That reinforcing the dike isn't a solution to the estuary problem, unfortunately, because even when we strengthen that dike, we there's a limit to how much yeah. water you can stack in the lake. It can hold more, but it still needs to come it out. It still needs point. to come out. And frankly, if you hold too much water in the lake, you'll kill the lake. And the lake is an important fishery. Um, the lake is 700 square miles. It's mm -hmm. an enormous body of water. So Everglades restoration really is the answer. Yeah. A very complex issue. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning on Thank Facing you. South Florida. Now, we want to remind you, our viewers, that the toxic algae bloom in 2016 actually sparked a year-long CBS4 investigation. To learn more about the Everglades, where politics, race, and money collide, you can watch Jim DeFitti's hour-long documentary on CBSMiami.com. Now, Florida's primary election is just a month and a half away. Up next on Facing South Florida, we sit down with one of the candidates vying to win the Republican nomination for state attorney general. We'll be right back.